The Eight Verses Meditation by Dr. Pang takes central stage in our Qigong practice. Its profound wisdom is truly mind-blowing and a reminder of who we really are. Federico Garcia has studied the Eight Verses in depth. Thank you, Federico, for sharing your insights with us. My name is Torsten Lüdecke and this is the Wisdom Qigong Podcast. I started to study the eight verses as the first thing that was taught to me when I went to study Zunang Qigong in China in 2006, I believe, or yeah, something like that. And that was day one. Oh, the trip, everything was overwhelming. No, it doesn't matter. Pay attention. This is very important, the eight verses. So in my experience, if the teachers who have been trained at the center in Pasha emphasize this, is because they were taught, they were taught, this is the most important thing to teach. Right. So that tells us that the foundation for any experience in Zineng Qigong is when we must understand the eight verses. It's it's a preparation for, number one, for any method or practice. Number two, the way that Dr. Pang teaches it is, it is a preparation for my life. The because life is like a series of like uh, events. Um, the eight verses is a manifestation of a form of law that is called the law of eight, which is the law of the octave. They use it in music. You strike the first note, and then you end with the same note in a higher pitch, and then you move on to the next octave. So this is the musical scale. There are many very complex things that, of course, it doesn't make any sense here, but. The eight verses is one manifestation of what is called the law of seven. It's also the law of eight, the law of seven. It's just seven notes, and then you go to the next note. That is the last note, number eight, which is the beginning of a new octave. So the eight verses is structured in exactly the same way. It's got two intervals, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, and then the next do. Uh, that the, the, the mi, fa is after the second verse. Qin Zong Yi Chong. And then before that, after that comes Wai Jing Nei Jing. And then there's the, the next interval is between Si and Do, which is Shen Yi Zhao Ti, received from the vastness. That is the preparation for the next octave, which is the body is harmonized with the Qi information, everything is fine, all this well. So, of course, I know that I have an obsessive personality to study anything. And, of course, that is exactly what I did with the eight verses. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's actually the first time I hear someone talk about this, uh, that aspect of the eight verses. Because normally the first thing I hear, it is about you know getting yourself into the right mindset, the right state, uh, state uh, connecting with the chi field, building up the chi field, and all of these things. Now, it's the first time I learned that there is actually a methodology, you know, music-wise, uh, behind that, so that that is very interesting, uh, and I don't think uh, you know many people are aware of that. Yes, probably not. This is uh, you know there are so many things that must be, must, so many things that have to happen for somebody to be interested in it. I understand that, but what you're saying is incredibly important. In general, before any practice, I need to be ready. Like, and this is immediately brings to my attention the notion of the reference framework. And uh, this is also a very important aspect to understand. I mean, it is, it is, it maybe it sounds theoretical, but actually everything that we speak about is incredibly practical. The reference framework basically for uh, those of us who may maybe not never heard of it is just the way that we, in our quote unquote, we call our mind or our personality or our way of seeing the world. That is the reference framework. It is basically, oh yeah, that is uh, this, or like that is green, that, that is a torsten, that is a wall, that is a this, that is a that. Sure, it's fine. But then usually for us humans, there is a, um, there's a projection that goes on top of that. Oh, there is a tor torsten and he's like this. Why is he like that? Why is he not like the other way? Look at that plant. Why is it not the color that I like? 
oh, I, but it's too hot, you know, whatever. So you see things, you know, more or less as they are, but also not as they really are. Not. And in fact, <laughs> theoretically, and also experientially, from what I understand in my experience, the re the attachment to this reference framework being things, oh, that is like this, that is like that. Yes, no, you're wrong, I'm right. That is the source of the dysregulation that results in the energetic imbalances in our body that cause disease. That is it right there. Oh, it's it's really, we could say it very ordinarily, it's my worldview. My worldview is what <laughs> causes the disease. It, it is very peculiar, isn't it? It so is my what worldview. You're so what you are saying is because of our reference framework, we distort the reality. And that also leads to a distortion and a, an imbalance somewhere, which is the cause of the disease. Is that is that what you're saying? Okay. Yes. And that, you know, if I bring it back to the eight verses, is what the eight verses is basically trying to uh, free us from, to take this away from us by getting into that state and by following these instructions or by following these you know, uh, while while we were preparing i thought well you know in a way it is an instruction but you could also call it a reminder a reminder of who we really are um so and i feel this is far more gentle than somebody telling me be this be that now if i see it as a reminder of who i really am then i you know it's far more you know, easier for me to get, get into that state and to accept it and there's no resistance uh, towards anything <laughs> yes, I really enjoy what you're saying. It's a, it is a reminder of who I really am. With this, I would like to, it, I don't know, for those who have, us who have heard this or experienced it, the one of the versions of the eight verses that is spoken by Dr. Pang in a different, in a, like, let's say like a, like I say, like a longer practice. If we're going to practice, um, lift you up, put you down, or uh, three centers merge for, let's say, two hours or three hours. Most people, of course, will not do this, but it is it was very ordinary. Um, in that preparation, then Dr. Pang uses a very interesting phrase right before any of the verses, after, you know, relax this and that, the whole body. He addresses the eight verses to a particular one that is the one that you mentioned, and he says it literally like this. O oh, indomitable spirit. And then the eight verses follow. So he is very deliberately and clearly, literally reminding us, no, who you are is the indomitable spirit. This may sound very esoteric, but <laughs> Zling Qigong is a very direct method, a very direct science. It is um, not really messing around. It is the in the in the Chinese um, translations that I have made, it is all very straightforward. There's no uh, fancy uh, uh, words. No, you are the indomitable spirit. This is for you. Right, right. My name is Leila Cupido, and I'm the project manager of the Students Hub. Our team is constantly adding events, teachers, videos and other resources to take your practice to the next level, improving the quality of your life and the life of the people around you. We do this work for you, so please use it. Hun Yuan Ling Tong. I didn't know, again, I didn't know he said that, so it's very interesting <laughs> for the community to, to hear that, uh, because it sums it up, right? And, um, and uh, then it opens us to what is coming next, which is the eight verses. So maybe we should, because we haven't really spoken about what it is, and a lot of people in the audience might not even know what it is. So maybe you can uh, explore a little bit what the eight verses are about and uh, what the essence is uh, content-wise as well. Yes. So after the first enunciation, for you, the indomitable spirit, then... The verses changed after 2014. Before 2014, it was Ding Tian Di Di. After 2014, it's Tou Tian Che Di. So Ding Tian Li Di means head reaching to the sky and feet to the earth, and you are in the middle in between. The new version is grow your feet all the way to the other side of the earth, and then push your head through the through the clouds, through the vastness, to the vast openness. 
these two little you know symbols changed it to be even more direct. No, no, no. Right. This is very clear. And you just immediately are all the way be in the bottom of the universe, and you're at the top of the universe. Right. Linkian. So that's Totian Chandi. And immediately there's a mention of what in Zinang Qigong is the um you could say like a visual image of the vastness, the openness, the blue sky. The reason why the blue sky is because Zinang Qigong uses many different traditions that came before, like a, a form of Buddhism, the Tibetan Buddhism, where the blue sky is the most important uh, sort of like mantra for them in Tibetan Buddhism. You refer to the blue sky as the openness. I'm referring to my notes here on the screen. Basically, it is you, the first note, the Do, is you are the in between what is the heaven and what is the earth, but you go beyond the heaven and beyond the earth, and there you are in between. That is the first movement. Now, this in between uh, kind of puzzles me because uh, if you if you really go all the way, then there is no such thing as an in between. Then you know it is. Yeah, I am the earth. Uh, the, the the earth. I am the blue sky. Uh, it is. It is. It is. For me, it is the mind that makes the separation. Now, I might be wrong here with what I'm saying, but I, it's, I said why I'm a little puzzled because, or maybe you know, it's also because Chinese uh, we can't translate Chinese. That is uh, one of the issues. Uh, any English word we we use might not a hundred percent match with what the Chinese actually mean. Uh, uh, but in my understanding. Um, the, the, it is it is true oneness. It is not yes me and the sky. We are one. That is already separation because I'm talking about me and the sky, right? It is a, it is true oneness. So um, uh, I just bringing this up because it puzzles me. I don't know whether you yes. you've, you've learned anything about that or yes yes. So there are different aspects to what you're saying. Where I can address the last one first. It's of course you understand that Zen Qigong is about the unity of man with nature. So if man and nature are one, there is no man, there is no nature, just like you're saying. Right. If I am above and in between the the aboveness and the belowness, then where am I? But then Zen Qigong is very practical. You see, it's not about some high, oh beautiful idea. No. How do I make this real for myself right now? Instantly, not later. Not in man, maybe not now. And so, <laughs> well, in Zinang Qigong, we talk about three Dantians, right? The upper in here, uh, the middle, which is um, where the five organs meet, and the lower, which is the lower Dantian. So they correspond to these very fantastic and wonderful pointers to our greater reality. I can access some of the heaven in the head. I can access some in between the heaven and earth in the middle tantian, and I can access the the energies of the of the what is below in my lower tantian. So this is very important to remember. It is great that you mentioned it. This is what Zheng Qigong seeks to marry them both always, every moment. Never, there is never a divorce between them. They're always together. Right. In other words, the theory and the practice are one. They're one. It is really a manifestation of consciousness. It is not the product of some person making it. So if we, that, that is how we start. Uh, you know, the, the head uh, touches the sky and the, the uh, feet firmly on the ground or through the yeah. ground in the later version. Now, how do we continue? What is the next verse? The next verse is... Uh, uh, xin song, yi chong, then expanding. What is it that is expanding? It is you, the indomitable spirit, in relation to your body, mind, person that you have. It is you. In the eight verses, before the eight verses, there's a preparation about the contact with the body, the relaxation of the body. So we, we didn't cover that, it, that, but that is pretty obvious. So then Xin song yi chong, then after expanding infinitely above, infinitely below, we get to expand infinitely, let's say in front of the body, behind the body, to the right of the body, 
it to the left of that. So the way in which it is described in a very simple way is that we can begin by visualizing the place where the body is located, where it is practicing Qigong, and then say, oh, look, there is your house, and then you go outside of your house, and then in the neighborhood, and then the city, and then your state, and then your country, and then your continent, and then beyond that, and beyond, and beyond, beyond, and then also in the other direction, in all directions. Yes. So it is it's always from the coarser to the finer. Right. It is from the material to the immaterial. And I'm also finding, again, this practical point that you mentioned earlier, uh, because, again, it's not you know some fancy guru sitting there and just talking about oneness. It's very practical because it's a reference for us as human beings. Now, everybody can imagine expanding through you know his house or her house and into the neighborhood and so on and so on so it is a very practical way of getting me to that state rather than just you know putting on a little candle and uh and saying yeah now you are we all one right and the attempting to transcend the nature right. gong is not a, it is not a transcendental science it is a transformative science it does not seek to go beyond or meditate it away or whatever no, you see exactly, very raw, this is how it is, this is how I feel right now, but then you transform it. And then you prove to yourself, yes, I must be this indomitable spirit, I can do this. Hmm. The other aspect is, um, in Xin Song, Yi Chong, we begin to, the process of blending the internal energy of the body-mind with the external energy of the Hong Yuan Qi, the original Qi spirit which is the indomitable spirit that we are, which is here, there, and everywhere, and nowhere, you know, right. the emptiness aspect of it. But it, this is where, we, where, again, it meets the practical sense, oh, this is how my body is doing, then, oh, maybe I can uh, begin to expand from there and see if it blends with this other experience of myself, which is maybe not located where this body is. It is beyond that direction, beyond that direction, beyond that direction, beyond that direction, beyond all directions. Mm -hmm. And this is a key. This verse is really, really, really important. <laughs> even, even this verse, you can use it as a practice. I would recommend, this is of course my experience, but I recommend this be taken very seriously. The blue sky, well, what color of blue sky is this? It is a perfect blue sky. There is no cloud in it. It is absolutely pure, like vibrant, full of liveness. That is the that is the the information, the chi of the original spirit. This, but it's got a, a presence which is like wow, you know. Mm. Um, so if we really can experience Qin Song Yi Chong, then. Everything else is very easy because then in the next verse, Wai Jing, Nei Jing, and then we, the instruction is allow your body mind to become externally respectful outside and internally quiet. But what it really means, in my sense, and I, for many, many, many years, I have experienced other people attempting to learn this. And they have a problem with uh, the word respect. <laughs> Some people do. But the word, and maybe even the original word in this verse, is really to become, allow oneself to become reverent. But there's not something that I'm forcing myself to do. I'm making, oh, I, I am so disrespectful. I need to be <clears throat> respectful. I need to be, no, no. Isn't it Qigong? It's not like this. No. It is an invitation an invitation to remember, I am the indomitable spirit. This is who I am. And so each verse, each preceding verse is the preparation for the next. So after I already uh, blended my experience in all directions and with my, my the way how I feel right now, the way that you feel right now, whoever is watching this, the way that you feel right now, this can be transformed just by us speaking about this right now. In Zineng Qigong, the theory and the practice are one. So when we, what that means is that consciousness, who we really are, is everywhere with us always, including right now. 
it is not waiting. It is also not not waiting, but it is there. And if it catches a glimpse, oh, I am they talking about me? Mm, I am interested in this. And then the experience of consciousness immediately begins to interact with the body mind. Right now, this can be a possibility. Then why jing nei jing? Then the reverence comes naturally. Oh, I am so wonderful, so great. And therefore, that makes me be reverent to myself. It's not about respecting somebody else. It's I can respect myself. Absolutely. I mean, it is. It, it, I would also use the word appreciation. Uh, if you appreciate who you are and if you appreciate you know, everything, uh, then it is automatically you are respectful. It just follows out of this appreciation. So it's not an instruction that everybody quiet now be respectful. It is uh, a really uh, a reminder of how beautiful things are. And that evokes the respect within me for these 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 wonderful things, including you know who I am. Yeah, the 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 word appreciation. I think it is fair to use. It is good in that um, it really I, what it really is is that I'm just knowing who I am. Actually, I'm just rediscovering who, rediscovering who I am. I'm not. It's not something I'm applying to myself. I'm cutting my head off and putting a new head. No, I'm just rediscovering. Oh wow, I am. Maybe I am different from what was thought, but this thought, quote unquote thought, is just the reference framework. Mm -hmm. It's just a form of conditioning. It is just mm -hmm. a memory. Mm -hmm. It does not exist. I make it, I as a person, I make it exist, re-exist over and over because I don't, I haven't been given the opportunity to open to the, this opportunity of uh, being wonderful and open and relaxed. And where do the eight verses take us from there? <laughs> then, after the third verse, that we have passed this kind of a challenging area where the transformation already potentially has taken place. Xing Cheng Mao Gong. Then the traditional simple description would be um, my heart is like a uh, uh, a well of clear water, my heart, my my inner being, um, and but it the, the the water aspect is very important. Images are really important in Zhenong Qigong, especially in the eight verses, because the language in the eight verses uses a very peculiar form of poetic description, which is traditionally called picture form language. Picture form language, of course, is very close to the way the Chinese is written and read and spoken. Because you look at a picture, a pictogram, and there's not a concept of the word. You see, just see the pictures. But especially with the eight verses, you don't think, oh, what is blue sky and what does it mean? No, you see blue sky, you see well, you see earth, you see you know, the different elements. You, you, you do your best to see it, to visualize it. And the information of the eight verses will come to you naturally if you make this effort. That is my experience. I, I'm, you know, just like anybody, I don't know anything. And then you you make it the effort to really understand it, just follow the very simple directions. Oh, you know, you need to uh, just try to see it as it tells you there, very simple. Do not make it hard, very simple. And then the, it comes to you somehow. How? Because we are this unlimited spirit, this, this uh, unconditioned uh, being. And I love how you say it comes to you naturally, because in a way, when we look at you know, the, uh, the mind is clear and the appearance is humble, this is the, uh, the translation I have here for the fourth uh, verse. This is not, um, again, it's not an instruction. That is more a description of where you are already, you know, after you've done the first three verses. It is basically, the, it, if they say the mind is clear, it means nothing else, but uh, we have let go of the framework, of the reference framework. So this is there's an absence of the reference framework. This is why the mind is clear. So it is describing. So it goes perfectly with what you're saying when you say now it it comes naturally. It's it's not it's not something I need to do now. It's just describing where I am. <laughs> yes. The the other important word in, in the translation from the Chinese uh, in this version where he's saying, 
oh, for you, who is the indomitable spirit, then the next thing is the word let, L-E-T in English, let. In other words, allow it. Allow for you to go through all these verses. Let it be, let it, let, allow yourself to become reverent, respectful, quiet. Allow yourself to be open and spacious in all directions. Allow. So it's let, allow. It's not about do it, shut up, stop what you're doing and be like this. No, that is not what it is. Mm. It is a poem. It is an invitation to, mm. like when you were saying before about the the the, the popular video, the, the song, the, when it is sung, then people experience, oh, this is a, this is a nice thing to experience. Like it, it, I'm invited I can I can be uh, enjoying it. It is an enjoyment, right? It's not supposed to be a you know task to put me down and punish me. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. And then we I was mentioning the the qual when I met was talking about the um, the visualizing the reflection. Why the water? The water can reflect. You can see through it, but it can also reflect depending on how you look at it. So. Xin Cheng Mao Gong is beginning to let that, that quietness of our being reflect both the inner condition of the body mind and the condition of the vastness, the openness, the blue sky. So they can begin to become open and maybe come together and become, you know, affected by each other. This is really the purpose of the eight verses, is to, for the blending of the body mind, the Torsten body mind, the Federico body mind whatever our reference frameworks might be, yours, mine, they might be different personally, but it doesn't matter. There is a relaxation of the reference framework. No, this is like this, that is like that. No, this is like a welcoming. Oh, maybe I can just relax that, you know. It's like a tension, you know. So this reference framework is very directly linked to the condition of the body, mind. Mm -hmm. Very directly linked. So then I can be, no, they can begin to merge. I am very, uh, it, there's like a, the silence is beginning. Our true nature is to be very silent. There, is, there isn't like the running thoughts. These running thoughts are really what is feeding the reference framework constantly. They go nowhere and they begin nowhere. There's just, it's a universal process. You know, it is, this is what's, what is taking place. Yes. But if I become aware of it, I, the indomitable spirit, <laughs> it's going to end very quickly like this. Oh, oh, I forgot myself. I was pretending to be limited to this, you know, little body mind. It is not to diminish it. It is to make it greater, to, to make the body mind, wow, even I even have this wonderful body and experiences, you know. It is not trying to transcend being human and being the spirit. That is ridiculous. And that takes us to the fifth uh, verse, because you already said you know, that the thoughts come to an end. Um, and there, there, the begin, there, there is a preparation for them to begin to come to an end. Yes. Right. So the next verse is yi nian bu qi, which in the literal translation from what I recall in the Chinese means no thought arises. Right. And that is different from the translation I have here. And I must say, I'll, uh, I think your version is more correct because what I have here is no distracting thoughts. As if there was a distinction between a distracting thought and a non-distracting thought, which I don't think there is because, you know, a thought is the thought. And the thought is basically my past repeating itself over and over and <laughs> over again. Uh, so I like... It's uh, it the uh, reference framework, yes. It is the go. manifest yes. the reference framework. So yes. that is a very pertinent uh, description, of course. It is useless to just differentiate between a, a thought and a distracting that they are equivalent. <laughs> well, in the sense of what we call thought, I put it in quotation marks because real thought is the thought of consciousness, which does not require some intellectual process to be, become manifested. You simply, you know what it is, you say what it is, you do what it is. That's it. Yes. It's simple. It's like, oh, let me think, mm, I don't know. No. <laughs> that is the reference framework. And this is the very the pertinent, the spinning wheel, like, you know, the... Uh... <laughs> so, because there was Xing Cheng, I was able to allow myself to be Xing Cheng Mao Gong, then, only then can I be Yin Yan Bu Qi. 
So right. I'm really making contact with the the emptiness. It uh, it appears to be empty, but it is not really empty. So that's the um, there there is a phrase in Chinese which is uh, very important. Uh, let me see. Um, Huang Huang Hu Hu Gong Gong Dang Dang. I'm not. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Pronouncing it wrong. Huang Huang Hu Hu Gong Gong Dang Dang. It appears to be empty, yet it is not empty. It is the openness. Mm. In the openness, in the openness is where I am, where the intelligence, the real, our real intelligence is there. And immediately as I speak of it, immediately it begins to resonate with my body mind and my in my central uh uh middle dantian. It's like there's a lightness, there's like there's a yes. Because what the eight verses really is, in my experience, is to remind me I am a yes. I am a yes that has no opposite. I, there is no no to my yes. There's just yes. Oh, this is happening. Oh, she said that. Oh, it is raining. Oh, my car broke. Yes. There it is final. Oh, there is a torsten. How nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is really to change our reference framework in a way to dissolve it. There will be a new reference framework when they get, you know, reestablished. You know, we still have to be human and do things and whatever. Uh, but the new understanding is reflected that fundamentally, I am this openness, I am this affirmation, I am this like um, enthusiasm. It is not excitement because excitement comes and goes, but enthusiasm can be sustained for a long period. And so these verses um, in Nini and Bucci were really establishing no thought arises, not because I'm making myself stop it, because if I allow myself to be Xing Cheng Mao Gong, then naturally the next is I will become Yin Yan Bu Oh, I am empty. I, there's no thought there. And you made a distinction, though. Um, you said, um, uh, I, I think I forgot your words, but uh, let me just try to rephrase it in, in my ways. Um, uh, you said that if there is no thought, then there is the space for the real thoughts to come up. But these thoughts are not the results of my processing and uh, and uh, thinking about something and analyzing, etc. They are just, you know, because I am in time, suddenly it's quiet. So it's the first time I can actually listen to intelligence. And what comes up then might also look like a thought to me, but it is something different, right? Uh, it is not a thought in the same sense. It is really me tapping into, you know, into the intelligence or into the uh, chi field and picking up the information that is already there. Um, and this is why, you know, so often when we have these insights or, you know, all of these brilliant ideas, they usually come out of nothing. They're not the result of me sitting over a paper and trying to figure something out. Um, and I think this is but basically you know, where we are right now in the eight verses, what it is preparing us for, because it continues with the mind expanding into infinite, uh, infinitive space, where you know I am uh, in direct contact with all this intelligence, and I can basically you know, channel this uh, and, uh, and be that. Yes, uh, you mentioned one word also. I, before I forget, I wanted to say it. Um, we definitely are organizing the chi field. Hopefully, we have enough time to re revisit this sense again. So, yes, what you're saying is basically what I am saying, what I remember saying. What I'm really looking for in the use of the eight verses is really what Dr. Pang calls the conscious use of the mind, the conscious use of the mind. Who is the user of the mind? In the ordinary reference framework, we say, no, what are you talking about? I am the mind. How can there be a user of the mind? I am the mind. No. Here with the, the eight verses say, no, actually, you are the indomitable spirit. You, the intelligence, you, the openness, you, the affirmation that has no opposite. You are the one who use the mind. You. And then when that is taking place, then you can say, we all know, I think we under, all understand what this is. It's just insight. Where does this come from? It is a create, cre moment of creativity, uh, 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 a flash of insight. Oh, yes, now I know what, what this is. 
now I am ready to proceed with this project, this idea. This is about creativity. So the eight verses really is a is a fantastic formula because the, the the original name is the eight formulas. It's a formula to uh, create more, to be created. To you, or I am the creativity. You are the creativity, and then naturally it comes out. Whatever it is that you or I are interested in, as a body mind, as you know, we have our own experiences. We we can use this. It is very practical. Mm -hmm. The eight verses was the before and after in the understanding of all kind of qigong in China. After after Dr. Pang came with Zhenong qigong and developed the eight verses, most of the pre-established qigong system say, "Oh, we also need a qi field. We need to copy it. We need to, in their, in their own way, because they understood. Wow, we have been working in the dark. You know, <laughs> now we have the light. Mm. So, and there is maybe beyond the scope of this, but." Zunong Qigong was also very much interested in improving any kind of process. Process of production, of agriculture, of manufacture, of science, of whatever. You can use the eight verses to become creative. And then whatever your field of interest, you will be better at it. Because then it's you. It's not just a reference framework. Right. I think this is a very important sentence. Uh, but, you know, it, if you, the real creativity comes from you and not your reference framework. And that is what, unfortunately, most of us uh, find so difficult because the reference framework has become so dominant in our lives. Now, the, everything, I, everything I perceive goes through this reference framework. And I have an opinion about everything immediately. And I have my own views about things immediately. And all of this is taking away and making it impossible to connect to who I really am and use my creativity and uh, to uh, and and to create all these extraordinary things and i think that is uh, you know if you look at the, you know, i'm just reminded of an artist i think an artist when they are in the flow as as they would probably they would probably use this word they have no reference framework there they're just completely out of their mind uh, you know, it's funny <laughs> that we say that yes. Uh, yes. but they are out of their mind and that is yes. when the creativity comes and that's when they they, they create this most amazing artworks and um, so uh, I love what you just said, although I just forgot what it was, but I, but I mentioned it. So everybody, so I hope our listeners. Uh, but it's okay. I also forgot. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, see, when we, when we are creative, we don't even care what we are saying. We are just enjoying the, being curious. Oh, I'm, this is so enjoyable. Let us play with it. It is about be playful, be curious, being open. The, and what you were saying also before you, I don't know how I forget, but. The reference framework in overall, what it does to the indomitable spirit is closing it down, closing it down, shut it up, stop it. It's closing. Zunung Qigong is about the understand. Another aspect is the understanding of opening and closing. Why do we get stuck? Because we got stuck being too close or being too open. Either way. No, we need to restart opening, closing, you know, closing, opening. We need to do this. And this is a very fundamental understanding. If I'm living from my body mind is afflicted by the reference framework, like what you said, opinions, this, that, the other, I'm basically closed. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Now, I, I want to make a, another observation here, and it's uh, because we are, it's kind of the reference framework is the evil thing. But when you said it's about opening and closing, uh, it reminded me that the reference uh, framework all, also serves a function. So it is really about both. Like, you know, the simple example is if I go to the traffic light, my reference framework tells me that, you know, if the others have read, I can walk because, you know, they will not cross the road. So I have some ideas of how I can go through life. So the reference framework can be very practical in many respects, but it's of about course. opening and closing. So knowing where is its place, where do I use my reference framework because it helps me to get through everyday life? And where is it in my way to see a reality as it actually is? And uh, and therefore, you know, um, uh, taking away from my creativity, et cetera, PP. Yeah. I, that is, a, I really appreciate your distinction. Of course, it is not about e good or evil or bad or whatever. It's not to say the reference framework is bad, of course. 
we, like you said, the reference framework is what allows us to be having this conversation right now, because we learned, we went to school, we learned the words, we know how to use the computer. You know, it's very, it's a very complex reference framework. We need to know how to use it so that we can have this communication. It is absolutely required. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the, the important distinction that you make also is, well, I need to see reality. And this real, the, the reference framework is a reflection of reality. It is not evil. It is a. It is an approximate reflection of reality. The key distinction here is when is the reference framework useful, and when do I know? Oh, actually, that is a sickness that I am having. The sickness that I am having is not seeing things as they are. In other words, that everything is a flow, um, and there's nothing good or bad. Really, there isn't. It is the interpretation that my body mind is giving it that makes it good or bad. But everything is just as a flow. So if I do not see reality reality correctly, I will project my, you know, let's say illness into the outside world. And then it's going to feed back into me. Yes, you're right. I am sick. And now you are sick too. Mm -hmm. So it is just to be reasonable. So the way that I understand it for the human being in our nervous system that we have is that most individuals who have a sick reference framework, they do not feel safe. In their life, they feel like they are they are threatened. This is the primary basic understanding, apparently, of most humans. It is not safe. It is not safe for me to exist and know that I am this wonderful being. It is not safe for you to exist and know that you are this wonderful being. It is not safe for either of us to know this together. Oh, you are wonderful. Oh, he is wonderful. How great. We are wonderful. That is... That is the complete opposite of the reference framework of humanity right now, mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. It is not safe to exist, to, to be who you really are. No, 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 no. You do your job and shut up, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's no fun in it. There's no playfulness. There's no curiosity. We are a little uh, distracted now from the eight verses, so, but I, I think this in itself would be a great topic for another um, uh, podcast in the future. So let's put this aside and uh, hopefully you and I have a long future together uh, and let's move to the next verse here. <laughs> Well, I, I know that we went a little bit far along the branches of the eight verses, but it's still the eight verses, actually. It's very, actually very important because we are really what we're really doing with the eight verses is that we are uh, seeing the reference framework for what it is as it's represented in my body mind, my body experience. And then we are reconditioning it to become regulated or by opening and closing it. Mm -hmm. So we are setting the we're setting the ground where this can happen. So after uh, no thought arise because it results from Xin Cheng Mao Gong. Um, then there's Xin Zu Tai Kong. For me, was the but the first verse that I said, "Oh yes, I this this will change my life." This this I didn't even know what it means. This will change my life, and so it did. So then we are combining all of our internal experience, our um, inner feeling of the body, the body mind. It is becoming to be quiet and blended with the outside. And now we pour everything from this body-mind to the vast emptiness of the blue sky. Just expand it and dissolve it everywhere. And then because there is uh, yin and buqi, there is nothingness. There's like a neutral zero state. And then the, the, the expanded it is everything that, that I have was been able to make contact with in my body, my person, my thoughts, feelings, whatever emotions. Now it is sent to be dissolved. Everything. Basically, let it go. Right? Oh, I'm so holding on to it. No, now time to let it go. Let it go. So there's a big close and there's a big open. And then there's a pause there. Usually, if we're practicing, you know, it's coming, there's the image of coming down through by way. So this is, remember, heaven and earth are meeting, right? There is no body, there is no the vastness of the no body, and they are somehow meeting. And this verse is uh, really the, you could say, the maximum exposition of myself as the indomitable spirit that is not located anywhere. 
I don't know who that is. It has no name. Who is that? Who am I? So there's a this moment of like very great openness, a great, great, great possibility. Wow. It is a incredible potential yeah. to really experience it. <laughs> it's just amazing to really experience it, to know it, and, and to repeat it, become addicted to it until this becomes your reality. This is the ultimate purpose of the eight verses. These simple eight verses, that is all. If I can really allow myself to become touched by it, then uh, there will be an incredible payback, you know, amazing payback. We have to understand in the eight verses, it's not just something that somebody made up. It is consciousness itself saying, oh, look, this is a way for to remember who you are. And then there's a person, there's a you know, social context, there is the historical context, you know. The way that the eight verses were developed is includes um, Taoism, Confucianism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. All of whatever, the, you know, and all the little things connected to that. So it is a way of putting everything in Chinese civilization into one little instruction. Everything. It is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. There is an aesthetic beauty to it. Whoever is watching, maybe if you are touched by this, I am this potentiality. What that means is that I am I am a no thing. I is a no thing. Therefore, if it is a no thing, it is not limited. It is unlimited. And then we can begin to experience the next verse, if you are ready. Um, Shen yi dao di, then from the from the vast openness of my being, I pour myself back into this body mind. See, so there's a vast openness, and now there's a relatively vast closeness because I'm closing back into the body. This this part of the the eight verses is fundamentally important to be able to go on to have an, an ordinary day, an ordinary moment after this. This is fundamental. I have to be Shen Yi Dao Di. The original, the Hon Yuan Qi is being poured into my body mind. I am being updated, actualized into, oh yes, now I remember again, I really am this indomitable spirit. I really am this potentially this openness, uh, this playfulness, this curiosity, this enthusiasm. This is who I am. This is who I is, is. And then the serenity that brings with it, oh, I can rest. I don't have to be um, troubled in my reference framework that I'm just a little person, just a little fragment, just a little machine interacting with all the other machines everywhere, like the stupidity of the world and the absurdity of everything. Oh, that, that stupid, you know, that this is to transcend, transcend and transform. Simultaneously transcend and transform. And then... The emphasis is on beginning to really become sensitive to the body again. Really allow it to come through all the channels, collaterals, meridians, parts of the body, to really sense the body, to feel the lightness, the openness that I really am originally, but in this body-mind. You bring it back. Then and only then does the eight verse make any sense. Zhou Shen Rong Rong. Basically, I am actualized, harmonized with the qi and the information. All is well. Only then can you really say all is well. Mm. Why is it true all is well? Because I am all. I am not separate from all. Therefore, there's no problem. Nothing can hurt, nothing can hurt me, really. Mm. If, I, if there is no me and you, or billions of others, we are all one, then there's no threat. There, I'm, not, I'm not in any danger. There is a harmony. I can begin again, and this is the important aspect of, um, in the musical scale, we begin a new octave, a new do. And so the, eight, the, the, the eighth uh, verse is the new do, the new beginning. And now that I am harmonized, I am knowing myself as I really am, more of myself as I really am, then I can just carry on and do whatever. 
Right. When I see a red light, I will stop. When I'm hungry, I will eat. When I speak with Torsten, I will know how to speak English. Um, but I'm not going to be projecting, you know, the reference framework or less of this kind of, it's really the sickness. It's the sickness of separation. Oh, it's me and it's him. I, I don't like him or he doesn't like me or we have a problem, you know. <laughs> I think it's it's important because we were talking so much about the indomitable spirit. So it's so easy to get, uh, to stay in this sphere. But you, you point out that with the last two verses, we actually, you know, so, so to speak, coming back into our body-mind because that is also a reality. And uh, yeah, the indomitable spirit will go on forever, but our body and mind existence will not. And uh, and so, you know, both are true at the same time, just as we talk about empty yet not empty. So both are true at, at the same time. And um, But with this experience, with this knowing You know, I can go through life in my body and with my mind uh, with this incredible lightness that you just described and with this incredible happiness. I don't have to look for, okay, what makes me happy today? I am this happiness already because I understand that. And this is, uh, I think, you know, if you, if you meet uh, Qigong masters, you know, Qigong masters, or all the friends that you have or that I have, now uh, this is one thing that is so typical for them. They're always happy. And it is because you know they have this they have this inner knowing, and they know everything is everything is good no matter what. Um, and uh, but at the same time, you know they are living their lives very practical and uh, and creating you know wonderful thing in their lives. And uh, this is why the last two, two two verses kind of you know initially I thought a bit like, oh that's that's a It's a pity we have to go back here. Uh, it was also nice being the spirit, uh, but it actually is very important because it's it is this practicality uh, also that you mentioned uh, earlier. Um, this is about supporting real people in their real lives. I mean, Dr. Pang was a no-nonsense man, basically. Huh? He, he said, uh, we need to come up with something that is easy for people to understand, it's hugely effective, and that has a scientific basis. Um, and here we go. Here's the Cheneng Qigong. And, um, and uh, in a way, he brings us back to that with the last two verses. Yes. Uh, to uh, it, that The experience of the body-mind of the human, of the Torsten or the Federico, is actually an experience of consciousness. It is not the other way around. You see? That is really, in my experience, what it really means. Uh, it is consciousness having an experience of being a human body-mind person doing things. It is not the experience of a body-mind person having a consciousness experience. That is the wrong order. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the eight verses is saying, no, let me show you the right order. The right order is you already are this indomitable spirit. Mm -hmm. You are not this limited entity pretending to be or trying to be or aspiring to be. No. Already you are this. Already. <laughs> I, we, we don't have time, but there's, there's many other... Uh, You could call them exhortations. In other words, uh, strong communications in the eight verses before the eight verses about basically uh, wake up, wake up to who you really are. Take take the slumber off your eyes. Wake up. Mm -hmm. So it is. You know, I, I actually I I do I have met some people that some that were studying Sanam Chikong that. Um, did not really have an appreciation of the eight verses. And uh, I can I can imagine that it might appear to be something that is kind of very rote and um, mechanical or something that is forced on me. But there is an incredible uh, wellspring of potentially of, of great aliveness if I can really connect with, it's not really about the eight verses, Or Dr. Pang or Zheng Qigong. Who cares about that ultimately? It's about it's about you. It's about I. It's about consciousness. It's about oh, I this is a tool that I have given myself to remind myself of how I can be happier, really. It's really about being happy. And it is a tool. So uh I was just thinking if you know some people uh yeah, if if you really if you really understand that fully, you don't in theory, you don't need the eight verses anymore because, you know, then that's just who you are and you've got it. And then the eight verses, you call it a reminder. 
So you can still you know, use it as a reminder, but it's more like, yeah, I knew that already, right? Um, so, uh, it, but, but it's also something else because, you know, it, it, it opens up another question for me here. When you say, uh, you know, Dr. Pang says, you start with being uh, being the the, this, uh, the the spirit, and then you go to the body. While most of us, you know, think it's the other way around. We, within our limited existence, we have to find the uh, the unlimited uh, consciousness. Um, he's basically using, suggesting the other way around here, right? Yes. Which but is when, yes. Yeah? But I wanted to clarify, and it is I I, I can I can. I, I cannot imagine anybody that would be exposed to this information. Or let's say that let's say day one, okay, we're going to show her this, that she's going to say, "Oh yes, of course I am this unlimited." It is very unlikely. My experience is probably very similar to everybody else's. Um, I am practicing qigong. Let's say uh, uh, pang qi, left qi, qi, and qi, or something like this. And it's, the reference is always, oh, me, I am doing this. I am expanding to the vast. And then I'm bringing it back to me, I, whoever that is. For many years, <laughs> decades, <laughs> I don't know who that is. I have no idea. Me, it's, but something is not right. You know, it's me. It always comes back to me. Oh, again, you know. <laughs> but then it, there's a, because of the the way that Zunung Qigong is designed, it is designed to naturally support you to discover for yourself no actually it is the other way around. Mm -hmm. it is not me as a personal entity expanding and, and gathering and this and that no it mm -hmm. is the totality with the experience of a uh, federico happening taking place that is what's actually the reality mm -hmm. but it is natural it is not about forcing it is not about punishment it's not about rules no this is not how it is. <laughs> you like that, uh, don't you? <laughs> I love, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I think, and I think it's a very, very nice uh, closing word, uh, Federico, um, because we are pushing our time a little bit here. Uh, but I think it was totally worth it. It was, a, I think, it's a fantastic um, information that we have shared here uh, with each other. And I would like to thank you so much for your input here. And I know that many, many people will be inspired and get new ideas and look at the eight verses in a different way and maybe you know, practice it more or use it more as a tool. Um, and uh, I, so I want to just mention that uh, in the show notes, there is a free ebook on the eight verses. So for anybody who wants to learn more and have different views, et cetera, et cetera, please don't, uh, download the, the ebook, uh, which is free and which gives you, you know, more information on the eight verses. You will also notice, for those of you who listen to the podcast for the first time, that we always end our podcast with the eight verses. So you will soon have the pleasure to listen to Katrin Hendricks singing the eight verses. And uh, for uh, uh, just for uh, for the sake of it, uh, there was another podcast with you, which was also very interesting thing. So we are putting this in the show notes as well. So if people want to listen more to you, uh, please go to that episode. And of course, we will have your website uh, details um, in the show notes so people can get in touch and learn more if they would like to. I, if you want, I, I can also add, or put a page on my website with uh, the notes that I prepared for this so that you it can people can access it. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Please do. Very good. I, and, you know, as, as always, I always want to always get into even more things, but I know that there is a limited time. But I my sense that we we... we we were able to basically just get through the, the bare bones of the structure of the eight verses. There's, well, there's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> we trust you enjoyed this conversation and we invite you to subscribe to our podcast so we can stay in touch and notify you of future episodes. We will end today's episode with the eight verses meditation performed by Chinin Qigong teacher Katrin Hendricks. Enjoy.
get your free ebook on the eight verses meditation please check the show notes below